and when I moved there, my whole family decided it would be a good idea for them to move there with me. And I don't mean like move in the town. I mean like street. Like I am in the shower and my dad's doing dishes. Like it's like, ugh, you get just on me. You're my grandpa. Now, I want to tell you, I love my grandpa living by me because my grandpa is one of these old school John Wayne men like we used to have in our country. You remember? We still have some in the military. But remember we used to have men, men. You know what I mean? Like when he was 16 years old, he joined the Navy with a fake ID so he could sneak into a war. Like that type of dude. And the first day he joined up, he got a tattoo of an eagle and the eagle covers his entire chest. And I'll bet that thing was cool when he was 16. (laughs) He's 92 now. He walks down the stairs with no shirt on. It looks like the bird's trying to fly. <laughs> and my dad and my dad moved in by me too, man. And like when you're a kid, you want to live by your dad. You get to be in your 40s, you don't, man. Not like right. Like my dad's, he's so angry. Like anybody have an anger, just like, like everything, his hair's real short, like he's mad at it, like, you know, and his belt's too tight, and the grass is like that high, like, you know, and on on top of being angry all the time, he blows everything out of proportion, you know, like the littlest thing happens, and he turns it into a nightmare, he wears a neck brace, for one thing, not one of the hard ones, it's one of those cushiony, soft ones, I think it's just to hold his head up so he can sleep while he's standing, but... (laughs) You know, you know what I'm talking. You got one. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, he wears it because two years ago some girl rear-ended him driving two, and it ruined his church softball career. So he's got to let everybody know. So, so, so whenever he comes in the house, I know there's trouble coming behind. Like there's gonna be something going on, right? So he walks in the house. He's got his neck thing on. He comes in. He's like. I'm like, oh, good God. I'm like, all right. So we all go upstairs. We're sitting around the kitchen table. He's like, oh, 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 oh goodness gracious, oh, buddy, you ain't going to believe this. I done gone out and caught the diabetes. <laughs> Do what, man? <laughs> I done gone out and caught the diabetes. I'm like, how you know you caught the diabetes? He's like, cause my feet's numb. <laughs> my daddy had numb feet, he caught the diabetes. His daddy had numb feet, he caught the diabetes. Now my feet's numb and I done gone and caught the diabetes. <laughs> I'm like, look, man, (laughs) before you start running around scaring everybody to death, telling them you caught the diabetes, I'm going to take you to the doctor and get you checked out, right? So we take him to see our doctor, Dr. Kim, right? We go in Dr. Kim's office. My dad's like, Dr. Kim, I done gone and caught the diabetes. He goes, ah, Andy, ah, what the heck you think you'll catch a diabetes, right? (laughs) That's not mean. That's just how he talks. If you knew him, that's spot on. <laughs> he goes, I know I caught the diabetes because my feet's numb. He goes, Andy, uh, first of all, you don't catch a diabetes, you'll catch a fish. <laughs> Second of all, you can't tell people you'll catch diabetes until I check your blood, right? <laughs> So he does. He takes my dad's blood sample. He leaves to go wherever they check to see if you caught diabetes with it. And two days later, we come back in his office. And we walk in the office, and my dad's like, Dr. Kim, I told you, I done gone and caught the diabetes. He goes, Auntie, uh, you'll not catch a diabetes. You'll tie your shoe too tight. <laughs> That's a true story. I've got that same blood running through these veins right now. You know how hard it is to go to sleep at night knowing I got that coming at me around the corner? 